Have you ever hiked up a mountain or driven up a mountain and, and stood on top and looked at the valley below you and the clouds which aren't really visible in the picture but they're out there and uh, just sort of wondered for a moment what it would be like if you could just run off that hill and fly out with those clouds? And what if you could really do that? What if you could just turn around and say goodbye to your friends and uh, friends and then just start to run? Whoa. And just run down the hill, just run a little bit, run, run. And then, don't do it. <laughs> hey, what are those? Those are feet. <clears throat> so that's how a paragliding flight starts. That's, it's just that simple. Um, so it really is possible to do that. But before we get into that, this is something that's often confusing. In the United States, you may never have seen a paraglider, you may actually never have heard of one, uh, or you may have had the wrong idea of what a paraglider is. So um, we're going to start with what is a paraglider. This is a paraglider. It's a fabric canopy. It has a top surface and a bottom surface and a bunch of cells that are stacked next to each other horizontally. Each cell has an opening at the front that lets air in, so it fills with air, and while you're flying, it's filled with air. And it looks a lot like that. Um, it has a whole bunch of high-tech strings which come down to the harness that the pilot is sitting in. And the pilot's actually quite strapped in. You, you don't fall out. You don't have to worry about falling out. Even if you got upside down, you still couldn't fall out. Um, and it's actually a pretty comfortable place to sit. So that's actually a paraglider. But we need to go through a few things just so that we're clear about what is and it's not a paraglider. This is not a paraglider. <laughs> this is a paraglider. <laughs> This is not a paraglider. <laughs> this is a paraglider. This is a high-performance racing paraglider. This is not a paraglider. <laughs> this is a paraglider, another high-performance racing paraglider. This is not a paraglider. This, these are paragliders. <laughs> this is not a paraglider. And this is the thing you're most likely to have had confused with paragliding. This is called parasailing. Parasailing is the art of getting dragged around by a boat at a resort. <laughs> <laughs> Usually with the benefit of a few Mai Tai. And if you like feeling out of control, parasailing is a great thing for you to do. Because um, you are completely out of control. Um, but, you know, the gear is kind of sim simple and, hey, what could go wrong? Let's look at a typical parasailing launch. Oh, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And maybe it's not supposed to go like that. Um, so back to paragliders. This is a paraglider. I like this. So it's not parasailing. It's paragliding. Um, I like this picture because it really shows how beautiful wings are nowadays. This is a current generation wing. And in 20 years of development, there's just a terrific amount of design technology and manufacturing and materials technology, really. Um, that's in these things. So uh, I find it sort of stunning every day that they can make a wing that looks this beautiful and has such a beautiful shape out of nothing but fabric and supported by nothing but the strings which all come down to the pilot. This is another thing that's not a paraglider and this one could be confusing because this is also a Ram Air canopy. This is a skydiving parachute um, and in fact paragliders evolved from these and in 1988, a couple of French guys went up a mountain in the Alps and ran off the mountain with these open. Um, uh, but the design constraints for a skydiving canopy are quite different. You start flying a skydiving canopy by falling 100 miles an hour, and then you open it. So it has to be built to survive the opening shock without breaking you in half and without disconnecting you from it and things like that. We don't have to do anything like that to start a paragliding flight, as you saw at the beginning. But before we talk more about starting a paragliding flight, we do have today's extra credit problem. So if you could just cover your work a little bit so your neighbors can't copy you, because um, I, hate, I hate to have that happen. And are these paragliders? Nope. No. Okay, whoever got no can stay after class and clean the eraser. No, no. <laughs> okay, so starting a paragliding flight. Um, another misconception that you might have, because it's a popular one, is that you have to jump off a cliff. And there are some places that we launch that have cliffs, but we don't actually jump off them, and you don't actually have to jump off a cliff at all. 
uh, for most flights. It's, mostly it starts like the one that I showed you at the beginning. And this is me, actually, um, with my sweetheart Jessica who's sitting back here. Uh, and we're going to go for a tandem flight at Brace Mountain. Brace Mountain's about two hours drive north of here. And I was actually there today hoping to fly, but the conditions weren't good, so I hiked back down and got back in the car. Sometimes that happens. So on the ground, the, the canopy just looks like a big piece of washing or bloomers sort of spread out, and, and it is. It, it isn't a wing yet. But you get everything straightened out. We all get connected into our harnesses. We get connected to the glider. And we just bring it up overhead. And we start to run down the hill. And we fly away. It's just like that. That's all it takes. So you don't have to be a super athlete. You have to have a little bit of judgment. So um, you're willing to learn about when it's a good idea to fly and when it's not. But you don't have to be a superman to do this. OK. so. Now, this is Jessica and I in just a couple frames later. And you notice this red glider over here. I don't know if you can see it, but it, it's, the glider has rocked back behind the pilot. Why would it be doing that? It's because he's run into a thermal. And thermals are air that's rising. A glider is always descending down through the air, because that's what gliders do. All, gliders, all gliding aircraft do that. And, but if you can get into some air that's going up, then even though you're going down through the air, the air is going up faster, you can circle in the lift and climb up to where the clouds are. So that's exactly what we did that day. Um, we went to that guy's thermal and we climbed right up to cloud base. What is a thermal? The, I'm going to give you just the thumbnail here because there's, there's a lot about this. But basically, when the sun shines, the sun doesn't heat the air. It's sort of the wrong wavelength. The sun shines through the air and heats the ground. The ground re-radiates at a longer wavelength and heats the air next to it. So you get these puddles and pools of warm air. This happens every day, more in the summer than the winter, and more on sunny days than cloudy days. But it happens every day. And when you get warm air, as you might imagine, the warm air wants to rise. And so at some point during the day, the thermals start to release. And they may rise as bubbles of warm air. They may rise as plumes that have funny shapes. But as you're flying along, you suddenly notice you're going up. And you have an instrument that starts to beep when you're going up, if there's no mountain near you. And if you keep going up for a few seconds, you go, oh, well, that's a big enough thermal that I can use it. So you start to turn. And you start to circle. And as you're circling, you're paying attention to which part of the turn you're going up fastest. So if I'm going up fastest here, then the next time, oh, then I'm going up slower here. So the next time I come around, I'll extend over this way, and I'll move my circle this way a little bit. And in that manner, I try to stay in the strongest part of the thermal, since the thermal is always going like that. Paragliding is really a form of being playful, and there are a lot of magical ways to, to play. I'm going to show you just a couple of them. This is that same flight in Austria that we started with a little bit later, and this is what a typical recreational paragliding flight looks like. He's just flying around. He can go anywhere he wants. He may be looking for a thermal. Um, he can land in any of those fields. You don't need a huge place to land. You don't need an airport. So he's just making choices, and maybe he'll find a thermal and climb up and go down to the next town. Or maybe he'll just land next to his car. Um, but look how beautiful it is. That's really what it's like. You're just up in the air flying. Sometimes you get to circle with a bird or a hawk. What could be more magical than that? Here's some crazy French people who released a whole lot of balloons from a boat on a lake. And then they brought their paragliders out to fly through the balloon. <laughs> We can be more joyful than that. We need some jazz to go with it. <laughs> Just totally playful. And this is another French thing that there's a festival at, at St. Hilaire every, every year where wow. people paraglide in ridiculous costumes, and of course, one guy has to be a wine bottle. <laughs> but he had the camera hanging from the back of his wing, which is why it was swinging around so much. So, and then this is, this is actually me at a competition in uh, Carolina in August. And just flying around in a sky like that, and with all these clouds coming and shifting. And um, there was, by the way, there wasn't much cloud suck this day, which is why it was OK to do that. Um, just magical, playful. So one thing you might be wondering, how do I actually land this thing? And landing is actually really cool because 
Every landing in a paraglider is an emergency because the engine has failed. <laughs> so you could think that's kind of stressful, and in a way it is, but um, it's also kind of fun because what are you going to do when, when you, you run into a little turbulence, a little small thermal, so now you're not quite in the position you thought you were going to be in, you still need to land, you got to land here, the ground is coming, you don't want to be in the trees over there, what are you going to do to get it on the ground and be safe here? And it's a really interesting challenge. And um, uh, I personally really love landing, and it can be very intense, but it's just lots of fun. But it usually looks like this. It's usually just that simple. So you might be wondering, gee, can I do this? Because this, I know a lot of extreme people do things like that, but what about you? What about you? What about you? Is this something that you could actually do? And the answer is, if you're a little bit athletic, like I said, and you have a little bit of judgment, yes, you can do it. If you're afraid of being at the railing at the Empire State Building, so am I. That's a place where you could fall. <laughs> you can't fall out of your paraglider. So um, it's very different. I actually know a lot of people who do this who have sort of traditional fear of heights. Um, so the answer to that is yes. And on my last slide, I'll, I'll just say that those are my feet. And uh, that was a day that I flew many miles and landed by a lake in a little town at a place where I could have a beer. And that's a pretty incredible thing to do, um, flying with the clouds like that. So I'll take some questions.